Most people take cold showers for one month. Some people try them for three. I wanted to see what would happen if I took cold showers for an entire year, and frankly, the results shocked me. People don't realize the long-term effects habitual cold showers can have on the body, and that's what I'm here to cover today. And it's gonna be good. Make sure to watch until the end because I have a two minute section that will change the way you view cold showers as a whole and give you invaluable tips to taking them yourself. So you probably have a lot of questions about getting started with cold showers. How do I prepare my body so that I don't go into shock? How cold should the water be? Was this gonna kill my gains in the gym? Is all of this even true or is it just another life guru trying to sell some more snake oil? Well, taking the last question first, it's definitely true, and there's a bunch of studies to back it up. I'm going to put it on the screen right now for you all across, but I'm just going to summarize a few of the most important ones so that you can kind of understand the benefits that you might get from cold showers and how the scientific data backs it up. Okay, so number one, um, a study by Nikolai A. about cold showers as a, as a treatment for depression. This was a very interesting study and it actually found taking cold showers is going to release happiness hormones in your body, endorphins. These are things that you get when you work out or have sex or any other number of happiness inducing activities. But when you take a cold shower, it's going to produce these hormones which are actually known to counteract depression. So yes, cold showers can be used as a partial part of a cure towards depression. Right, another study called uh, Voluntary a Activation of the Sympathetic Nervous System, and it's actually a quite famous study by Wim Hof. If you don't know him, look him up. He's a legend. I love that guy. And it shows that you can control the sympathetic nervous system just with breathing and cold water training. There's actually another study by Wim Hof that shows that cold water techniques and breathing can be used together to reduce stress which is wonderful. And there's another one that shows taking cold showers often can help you get used to cold water if the water is cold enough when you take the showers, which I thought was pretty cool. And it's a tolerance that I myself have been noticing myself building up. I actually go outside every single morning, sit at my back porch. I, I sit out there in a t-shirt and Temperature is below freezing, below 32. This morning it was, I think, 30 degrees, and I sat out there and I did the Wim Hof method, and I did one round. I'm like, this is light. Took my shirt off, did a shirtless for another round, and I was fine. It's insane what kind of benefits uh, this Wim Hof method with both breathing and cold showers can bring you. And if you want more information on the breathing part, go ahead and check out my other video on the channel about breathing, and it's very, very important and I think you'll like. All right, so you can see that there's many studies on the benefits of cold water training. Most of them relate to the mental benefits. However, there are actually physical benefits to the treatments as well. And I think that's a good transition to my story. Plus, I think you wanna hear my story because some of the effects from cold showers, I haven't seen reported anywhere else. Okay, so basically when I started, I got the expected effects. I saw an increased mood and I saw more energy and I was feeling great. Okay, that was great. But when I started doing them longer and longer, I've kind of found that it was, it was hard for me to get motivation. Like at first you have that break burst motivation because like the first couple times you're doing it, it's great. But then you get over this hump into like the pit of despair and it's actually a measured phenomenon. I'll put like a little picture of it up on the screen. Um, a measured phenomenon that makes it harder after the first. However, I found a wonderful trick to get into cold showers that I'm going to share with you in just a minute. Okay, but wait, let me share the rest of my story. So I actually never used hot to cold techniques, which are going into the shower, making it cold, and then making it hot when you get when you get too cold, and switching back and forth. Back, I never did any of that. I just went straight through, and I still saw all of these great benefits. But over time, I started seeing certain effects that I didn't even remotely expect. Since getting into the cold shower was a more difficult discipline, getting out of bed became easy. It served as a marker for how far I had come in my discipline journey, and when I started cross-country, cold showers got easier. Another unexpected benefit I got from cold showers was my confidence in social situations. 
I hadn't been able to find any studies on the social impacts of, of cold showers, but I can tell you personally that I saw a definite increase in confidence because my mood was better and I was able to converse with people easier because of that. And that's just a great self-repeating cycle. Suddenly, it wasn't so hard to talk to the girls and like the popular guys in school. When you're doing something in the morning that no one else is doing, it gives you a sense of confidence like nothing else. And I found that with running in the morning and I found that with meditating, Wim Hof, and cold showers as well. Because of that, I also came to value myself more because I saw that I was putting in the hard work and my brain recognized it too and it was, hey, hey kid, you're a stud. And I started to believe it after. Also, it has insane impacts on sleep. If you take cold showers before bed, it might w keep you awake for a little bit longer for the way you're because of the way your body works, cold showers, if they're not very long, actually heat up your internal body temperature, which makes it harder to get to sleep. And that's why sometimes taking cold showers wakes you up so much. But if you do them a couple hours before bed, say you go to bed at 10 p.m. if you do them at like 5 p.m., it uh, actually can help you get to bed. And I found that over time. When I started taking cold showers, I found myself getting to bed easier. In terms of physical recovery, I didn't notice cold showers making any difference on my games in the gym or my recovery from workouts much at all. I like to do them after workouts sometimes still just because it's nice to get this simple energy and feel refreshed and enlivened after a really draining workout. Anyway, to touch, touch quickly on spirituality, I found benefits mentally and increased focus after taking a cold shower. Cold showers were especially effective when used in conjunction with the Wim Hof method breathing, and I've been doing that every day. Combining those two things seems to be almost like a secret weapon for me, because Wim Hof breathing is just a dynamite way to start your day, and it gives you such energy and motivation, it's insane, it's unbelievable. So. Would I recommend cold showers to self-improvement newbies after a year of trying them? Well, my answer is a resounding probably. If you're completely new to cold showers, it can be a difficult transition to start using them. The truth is, the shock is going to be insane, going from warm water to cold water, and it's uh, it's hard. Like it's hard to do. There are techniques that can be used to overcome this, but. At its base, it's a hard thing to do. So, here's what it comes down to. If you don't think you can sustain it as a habit, then don't do it. Um, if you find yourself lacking discipline, if you're just getting started on your self-improvement journey and you can't really make yourself do hard things the way you wish you could, then don't start with this one because eventually you're going to fall off and you're not going to have any habits. Alright, so say you've decided to do cold showers. So, how do you get started? Well, I have a quick two minute guide that tells you how to do them and some of my top tips for getting them done. Alright, so let's start the timer now. Alright, so basically when you get started taking cold showers, they're gonna suck and that's going to be expected. But you can get over this by trying to get into the shower a little more quickly each time you go in. This is the tactic I used, and now I can instantly get into a cold shower, no problem. Next, you want to get right into the cold water, unless you live somewhere insanely cold. Um, turn the water all the way to the coldest setting. Next, jump right in to that bad boy. Studies have shown that even just 30 seconds of cold water exposure can do wonderful things for your body. So if you don't make it the entire length of your shower, don't feel bad if you have to make the water a little warmer towards the end. However, try not to go too hot. Just increase it as much as you have to, to feel comfortable in the shower. It's harder, but you'll get used to cold showers much faster this way. If you really need to and you hate cold water, you can alternate between hot and cold. You just have to make sure to end on a cold cycle to kind of get all of the benefits. Now for some quick tips. So, try practicing Wim Hof breathing beforehand. You can look that up on YouTube. Um, make sure when you get in, you fully get in. Not just like kind of dodge the water, get out of the way, and get in when you have to to wash it off. Try and expose yourself to as much of it as possible. Lastly, you have your entire life to start taking cold showers, so you don't need to rush it. You can approach it with a long-term mindset if you're just getting a little bit more in each time. Eventually, you'll get on all the way and you'll be happy.
Alright, so there's my quick tips, and I have one last section before I go. So, if you've decided you don't want to do cold showers, what are some low-hanging fruit self-improvement habits that you can start instead? Well, one is journaling. Journaling is absolutely wonderful. I do it every day at, before bed. I'll do gratitude journaling and a little interaction journaling. But really, anything that you can do that lets you uh, process your thoughts in a better way is really positive. And there's so many studies that show journaling is great. I think that a great way to start with journaling is to write down five things that you're grateful for, either right before you go to bed or right after you wake up. And it'll just improve your happiness like you would never expect. Next one, drinking enough water. So many people don't do this. Staying hydrated is such a key component of human life. And you'll start noticing so many things that get better once you start drinking enough water. Um, lastly, reduce screen time. By reducing screen time, you're going to see many improvements in your life. You'll see everything improvements, everything from discipline to focus, even to your moods. It'll, it'll be less aggregated and swinging. And if you want to see even more, subscribe to this channel because I post daily videos that will help you improve yourself. Also, like this video because it really does help the algorithm. And my channel will grow and I can produce better videos for you guys. With all that said, thanks for watching. This was Zentech. Stay Zen.